Do you want to go up there and join him? Oh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! She's way up there! I knew it! She's going to join him! Hey guys, welcome to my daily vlogs! Please subscribe! What's up Mabu High Squad? How are you doing? Did you sleep well? I hope so. Guys, it's another day, another vlog here at the Mabu High Squad farmhouse. I'm about to change the water bowls of my birds. Look, they've installed new switches for our kitchen here. Ah, dream kitchen, guys. Honestly, I am so grateful that this is finally done. And if you guys are new, this is the house that my partner RJ and I have been working on for about four years. It's still not done, you can hear them working upstairs. But we are finally nearing completion of the inside of the house. We still have to do the outside, like painting work and all of this beautification of the outside. Then we gotta like do landscaping, see? That's all dirt out there. Then we gotta do the pool, and then we gotta do the like Bahe Kubo area, and then we, you know, it's a work in progress, you know what I'm saying? But anyways guys, welcome to the channel. All right guys, just served the birds breakfast. They are busy feasting. Feast, my dragons, feast. And I was looking up at the tree because yesterday the birds were totally busy chewing on the bark and twigs and stuff. But look, see those new leaves blossoming in? They're gorgeous, they're, and they're a different color. They're like reddish, orange, um, peach. Now, I don't know why I didn't notice it yesterday. Like when the, the parrots were here and biting the branches and stuff, right? Only noticing it just this morning. And now, guys, I'm wondering if somehow the parrots chewing on the bark, like somehow stimulated the plant to grow new buds. Do you think that's possible? Oh wow, there's even some way up there. New leaves way up there. Oh, they're so beautiful and they're such a cool color. Yay! Our African Talisai tree is growing. Woohoo! And that is a good thing, Mabu High Squad, because if you saw the last vlog and you saw how the birds were destroying the tree yesterday, OMG, I was so worried. So guys, because the workers are still working on the home, there are certain windows and doors that are open all the time and so if you've seen previous vlogs we have a fly problem but the good news is the predators are now starting to move into our house like yesterday i totally saw a jumping spider right here with a fly in its mouth eating so that's good news if i find more jumping spiders outside i'll release them in here so they can start proliferating um because this fly problem seriously needs to be resolved, but in a natural way. I mean, guys, we live on a farm, seriously. We gotta expect that insects and other like unwanted creatures will be inside the house. Our smart mirror, I think is working now. So apparently I can step on this and it can weigh me. Let's try. Okay, am I doing something wrong? Oh, there. I weigh 70.8 kg. Oh man, how do I convert it to pounds? <laughs> I grew up learning pounds, but I guess that's, I mean, I know I'm a healthy weight. I go to the gym regularly, so. Wow, cool, like it. There are other features in the smart mirror besides just weighing. There, there are a whole bunch of features. We just need to learn them. And it's attached to our internet. But uh, thank you so much to Life Smart PH for providing this uh, smart mirror. Yay, they also installed our new keypad here. See, chandelier, pin lights, oops, spotlights. Woohoo! All right. There, of course, is our Kenneth Cobbenpoy chandelier piece called Limbo. For some reason, it looks like on my vlogging camera, the lights are turning on and off and flickering, but in real life, they are all on. <laughs> How strange. Also installed another smart mirror right outside. The ant room, yes, which guys, is almost done. I'm so excited. Guys, I'd like you to meet Ernesto Gumban. Yes, hi Ernesto, welcome to our place. Yes, he is the professional at knitting or weaving our net flooring. 
Yay! Salamat, Kuya! Yeah. Awesome! So, he's literally by hand weaving a net floor. He's the best in the country. RJ found him on Facebook. And he is literally going to by hand knit a net floor to extend along this entire space here. Guys, I've been waiting like two, three years for this. This will soon have a beautiful net floor. And then we're planning on throwing throw pillows um, and stuff there so, you know, kids could lie down or I could lie down, guests could lie down there. Um, and we could see a beautiful view of the forest. Guys, let's go up there. Here, wait, you guys need to see the gorgeous view that exists up on the second floor if you haven't seen it yet. Oh man, it's like perfect. So these holes here will have glass floors. I believe they're coming today to install the glass. Yay! But guys, look at that view. Isn't that just beautiful? In the mornings, the sun rises right there. And gosh, the lighting is just gorgeous. Nice view of the property. So we'll be able to just lie down here and kind of look out into nature, up into those trees, watch any birds that come. It's really great. And this room will be climate controlled to be at perfectly, I believe I'm gonna keep it at a nice 22 degrees C. So North American room temperature-ish. And yeah, it's gonna be a uh, pretty fun space. This is where, in case you're new, this is where I'm keeping all my pets. My exotic creatures, reptiles, amphibians, um, and of course, ant colonies. Because ants are a big part of my life, guys. So we figured we might as well build a whole section of our house dedicated to the ants. Um, in case you're new, one of my other channels is the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Um, it's a YouTube channel about ants, of all things. Um, and I started it in, as a nerdy hobby just in my bedroom when I was living in Canada at my parents' place. Um, and I had no idea, guys, that, you know, 12 years later, it would bloom into something beyond my wildest of dreams, honestly. Um, and it really is awesome to be able to build my dream ant room. Guys, Theo here is teaching me. Good morning, Theo. Hello, good morning. How to use the smart system keypad. So check this out, guys. Here's the curtain, right? 0% means closed. And I can open the curtain by dragging it to 100. How cool is that? <laughs> Sweet, so we can have some like full unfiltered natural sunlight streaming through here if we want But I'm gonna keep it closed. Whoops there Like so you can also control it apparently there it goes closing We can also close it by touching these buttons open close and we could pause it to stop it How neat I love the technology now This is so cool so guys, our smart home is powered by LifeSmart PH. If you are building a home, or even if you would like to smartify your home, be sure to visit LifeSmart PH on social media. Check them out. They've got a ton of amazing products. Guys, these dogs make me laugh. They have made it. These are our, two of our dogs, Cypher and Sahara. They have made it their business to be guard dogs from our bedroom windows. So they bark at every cat and dog that passes by. I think they see... What, are they, what is it they see? I think they see some street dogs way down there. Right there. <laughs> Guys, they're not coming here, don't worry. So we have our dogs potty trained on these puppy pads, as you can see here, uh, which we change regularly. We're really thankful that they go on the puppy pads because I know a lot of dogs, small dogs especially, tend to be on the harder side to housebreak. But when they arrived, I was religious at making sure they learned how to use puppy pads. Yay, the glass people are here, guys. All right. Which also means we'll be able to have the glass panels in our stairs. See these little grooves here? That's to accommodate glass. We're gonna have glass 
um, with alternating panels throughout the stairs. Yay, which means our dogs can finally have free roam of our entire house. And our two larger dogs, Brittany and Rizal, who've been currently living at the staff house, can finally come in the house and enjoy the space with us. We've just been afraid to let Rizal and Brittany inside because carrying them up and down the stairs is kind of risky because if they struggle and then they fall through these spaces, we're just really paranoid that they'd hurt themselves. Whereas carrying the little dogs up and down the stairs is a lot easier. They're easier to control. Um, so yay, once this is all full of glass, we can finally let our two dogs in. Another thing too, guys, which is awesome, is the windows and doors will be replaced at the staff house. Um, because the staff house was built around the same time as our home. It was completed before our home. And the frames that were used were not the best quality. Uh, so we finally um, have bought uh, good quality window frames, window glass, uh, sliding doors, slash proof um, mesh, uh, just like in our home. And they're gonna be replacing all of these windows. Yay, awesome. Isn't that great? And guys, it's really good quality stuff. Like this here, it's actually aluminum, I think, but it's made to look like wood. Even the doors will be changed. They'll be aluminum as well, same color. Yay, I love renovating. So speaking of the staff house, there are a few rooms there. Um, there's also like a, a an eating area, kitchen, wash area. And living there now is Ate Elsie, whom you guys know, our helper. Um, and her husband, who um, also helps and is part of the team now. Our driver sometimes stays here, uh, but we are going to hire more staff. Um, in the coming months. We're just looking and interviewing now um, to join our team. I'm really excited to expand our family. Yes. You know, when uh, increasing your team, just like any team, um, the screening process needs to be pretty rigorous. You know what I mean? Because like, especially if it's like home staff, because I mean, you're trusting people to come into your home and that's a big responsibility because, you know, I mean, I'm sure your imagination can come up with many ways that uh, things can go wrong if you don't hire the right staff. And so, and also like, it's a personality thing. It's kind of like a marriage. It's like, we're kind of interviewing people who will fit into our circle, right? And we're really grateful to have at the LC part of our team now for about 10 years. You know, we find that when um, hiring people to join your team, loyalty is like gold. If you can find someone that is loyal, um, then you need to hold on to that and invest in them. You know what I mean? Whether it be editors, help, help staff, anyone to join your team whatever team it is. Loyalty, that's gold. Jaya, the editor of these vlogs, who is going on several years now that she's been editing our vlogs. Mabuhai squad, show, show some love for Jaya in the comments, seriously. Especially lately, these vlogs have been like an hour long. Guys, I'm gonna be a proud parent right now. Sahara, show them how you play fetch. Ready, sit, go get it! <laughs> Good girl, good girl, yes. And there she goes. <laughs> okay, fine. So I've started to think about what we're gonna be doing with this side lot, which is also ours. Um, the initial plan was to use it as an area for crops and to use it for animals. So our goat currently is living on that side. This building here, which is the barracks, um, we might convert that into part storage, but also partly for animals, like chickens and stuff. Not sure. But yeah, um, this area here is where we plan on planting a lot of our stuff. Um, currently growing there are um, our mango tree, which we planted a long time ago. I think it was three years ago. They relocated it from the back to here. Also, an arateles tree. For those of you Filipinos, you guys know arateles. Guys, it's the most delicious fruit ever. It's a, It looks like a berry and it grows from a tree 
And guys, no word of a lie, it's the sweetest, sweetest fruit you've ever tasted. Not even tart. It's so sweet. And it's honestly my favorite fruit. Um, so that's growing there. And I believe Sampalok, which is known as tamarind, is growing there. We have avocado growing at the back, given to us by our friends, the Matsuyama. So this area here will definitely be for the growing stuff um, and for animals. But that is also going to be a huge undertaking, guys. And you know, a lot of people, um, a years back when we first got the property, they're saying, why do you want to live on a farm? And I said, why not? I thought everybody, I thought the end goal for everyone was to kind of live in, on a farm and like live off the land, but apparently not. Um, but in these current times, right? Like with the pandemic, climate change now causing a lot of crop shortages and food crisis, you know, eminent. Now people kind of get it. They understand why RJ and I invested in, uh, in a place where we could grow our own food. I mean, yes, also it's a passion of mine to be out in nature, to be with animals and to like grow stuff. But also it's relevant in these current times to have at least an area where you could grow some of your own food. And guys, we were in the US recently and things are expensive. OMG, like breakfast RJ and I had, I mean, mind you, it was at the hotel, came out to like 50, 60 bucks. I'm like, what? You know how much food in the Philippines we could buy with that kind of money? Just unbelievable. So I think everyone should get into farming, even if they live in the city. Just, you know, even growing food at home will make a difference. At least it's organic. And, you know, you know what's going into your food. Um, because, yeah, uh, I just feel like farming is gonna grow more and more important over time. Here in the Philippines, we've had... Um, we're, we're currently going through an onion shortage, right? Um, and the world recently had a chili pepper shortage for shirachi sauce or whatever it's called. And I think these shortages in very important crops will continue to happen in this like day and age of like climate change. I don't know, that's just me. So yeah, that's why we're living on a farm, guys. And it's kind of neat to know that you're eating clean, right? Like this coffee literally came from just a few minutes from here. And I am sure there are no like preservatives in here, you know, cause some, some things need preservatives in order to be transported like across seas where it'll be stored for a certain amount of time, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is like literally clean coffee. The vegetables that I eat at breakfast, you know, the sweet potato leaves that I often cook with my rice, it's literally picked from the field. <laughs> like it's literally just picked. Ate Elsie goes and picks them off the ground and we boil them and then I mix them with my rice and that's what I eat for breakfast. It's just really neat to know that there are no chemicals in there. All right guys, nearing the end of the gym session with my coach Paul and his girlfriend Sheena. They just got back from a huge vacation trip in Bohol yeah. in Cebu yeah. and... So what's in it now? Awesome. Well, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, guys, coming home after the gym is always the best. But guys, look at what I'm looking at right now. See, this is what I'm talking about. A jumping spider. It's these spiders that will actually eat flies. And they are so good at catching these flies. Gosh, loving this smart mirror. It's just so gorgeous. Anyways, let's turn on the lights in the kitchen. Guys, I want to show you what just arrived. Guys, window decals. I've been waiting for this. This shipped all the way from China. Uh, guys, these are UV anti-bird collision decals. So apparently, um, while I open some, you can't really see them now, but they're shaped like leaves and they reflect UV, which is perfect. So um, we could use these to stick onto our aviary windows and hopefully the birds will be like ah like it, the, the birds will able will be able to see it uv reflects off them and they'll you know they're less likely to bang into the glass now i have uh or rj ordered one two three four five packages and each of these five packages contain four sheets and each sheet contains one two three four five six 
like different leaf patterns on them. So I think I'm going to stick them on the windows that I see the birds seem to be flying into the most, which is mostly around the cages. Um, well, around the blue-naped parrot cage because the birds sometimes overshoot when they fly and then they end up trying to grab onto like the spirals that I've drawn on there using soap. So like if you're new, if you look at the aviary, see these spirals and hearts that have been drawn on the glass? I just used soap, literally a bar of soap to like draw designs on the glass as recommended to me by one of you, Mabu High Squad, Renee. Thank you, Renee. Renee happens to have worked at US zoos for 20 years and made this awesome suggestion of drawing soap designs onto the glass so the birds see that they're there. If you watched our last vlog, you saw that some of the birds kept hitting the glass. Um, not fatally, but hitting the glass nonetheless. Because in case you're new, guys, birds don't naturally know about glass, it doesn't exist in their natural habitat. And not only that, birds don't naturally know how to fly. They really need to learn the technique. It's like riding a bike. Sometimes you will crash. Sometimes you will, you know, miscalculate a certain turn or whatever, right? And you'll crash. So like these are techniques that the birds need to learn. And I mean, these birds are less than a year old. It's the perfect age for them to learn because the older they get, it's gonna get harder for them to learn flying techniques. So, I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna leave these patterns on and I'm just gonna put like the decals on. Now these stickers don't have an adhesive, so it, it's just kind of like a vinyl that you can stick on and it sticks but via, I don't know, like static electricity or something. So, um, I'm gonna do that now. And then I'm gonna let the blue napes out and see if it helps. Guys, check out what it looks like. Awesome, right? It actually looks good. It, there's no sticky part. It just literally, and look, a little bit of Canada too. See? It actually looks very beautiful. Um, so let's hope this helps with letting the birds know that there are, that there's a surface here. According to um, the website where we bought it, um, it really glows because birds can see UV light. Humans can't, but birds can. So though this looks relatively light to us, apparently to the birds it's very visible. So let's hope it works. Yes, along with the soap. RJ thinks that eventually when we wash the soap off, we should just keep the leaves on. What do you think, Mabu High Squad? Isn't that great? And all of that was one package. I also put a few here. I think there was one time a bird kind of flew into this area. There's even, look, a four-leaf clover. How cool is that? All right, time to let the blue napes out. And the sun's coming out perfect. It actually looks really beautiful, guys. Like, this is perfect for Christmas. It looks like icicles on, on, a, on a window. Frost on a window, right? You like it? Yeah. RJ actually likes it. Yay. Let's see what it looks like from this side. Sweet. Oh, so pretty. Okay, birds. Hi. Okay, these birds are hungry. It's afternoon, so... Um, I should probably feed them. Do you guys want to go out? Should I feed you first or should I let you out now? Let's let you out now and then I'll feed you in like an hour and see if you guys come back. Yes. Open sesame. Mm-hmm. Yes, there you go. You guys are free. Come. Look what I got. Yes. Mm-hmm. Come on. Come on, who's gonna touch it first? Huh? You gonna come out? Come on. Good boy. Good boy. Okay, he's changing his mind. He's like, mm, that. 
Good boy. There. Good boy. And now, here. You gotta do it in stages. Until they, they learn that the way to get down here is you gotta go to that perch first, then this. I have to kinda guide them. Okay, she gets the idea. Here. Here. Good girl. Yep. You got it. You got it. Here she comes. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Mm -hmm. You guys saw in the previous vlog, she will fly to me from where she is. See? Oh, you're so awesome. Good girl. A little bit of walnuts for that. Oh, she's, she didn't even finish her. Here. Got a piece of walnut. I don't think you're done. Oh, what a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous bird. Here comes the male. I wonder if the male, here, step up here, into the tree. Wanna go in the tree? I wanna, I want the male to come also. I wonder if the male will fly to me. She's trying to grab the stick. Okay, no, no, wait. Step here. Step up. Step up. This is okay to perch on. It's okay to perch here. Ah, she's to, oh. Okay, she slipped and she's going to my body. I mean, at least she knows that my body is a safe place to perch. She wants a snack. She wants a piece of walnut. Oh my gosh, <gasps> the male just perched on me. Here you go. Okay, so birth, both birds trust me now. Well, isn't that something? You guys gonna fly up in the tree again and destroy the tree? <laughs> it's got some new buds. <laughs> yeah. Here, here. Okay. It, guys, they're talking to me. Okay, back. Step up. There you go. See, much more comfortable. I'm just gonna walk around. Yes, I have to put away my stick because they're always looking at the stick and they've already associated that once they touch the stick with their beak, they get a tree. So I can't be holding the stick randomly because they, they try to go for it. Gosh, I love befriending birds. It's so awesome. I wonder if the male will fly to me. Come. Come on. Come on. Can you fly this far? I'm sure he can. Come on. Or is he going to fly up in the tree? Oh, he's coming. Good boy. Good boy. Wow. They both trust me. Guys, this has been a journey of like getting the birds to trust. Ow, their claws are sharp though. Ow! No biting. No biting. Why are you guys laughing? Here, I'll put you down. Please step up. Okay, or fly back to the cage. Step up. No! Here she comes to my face. I wonder if they will poo on me. Guys, the male flew up there. <gasps> I'm really glad that Ate June decided to repot these Peruvian ferns in more natural pots with uh, coconut fiber because they're great for gripping on. Now the male's up there. I want to see him fly down. Come. Come, come, come. Will you fly down? Or you like it up there? I'll leave you up there. All right, enjoy. Please try not to chew on the Peruvian ferns. <laughs> I love that plant. I think he's gonna try to fly back down. Come on, come on. Yeah, good bird. Good bird, wow, you're a great flyer. Good boy. Okay, I'm gonna give him a treat. Guys, he's a good flyer too. Very good. Awesome recall. I'm just gonna pinch his, his claw, his talon a little with my thumb so that he learns to be stable. I love that he lands on my two fingers. No biting my ears, no. Where is he going? Oh my God, where is he going? He flew back to the Peruvian fern, come. Oh, he looks so good hanging there. Guys, look at him. He looks so good up there hanging. You're beautiful. Come. Guys, this girl is biting my ear. No, 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 no. Oh my gosh. 
Oh man, it's raining. Whoa, okay, I gotta give you guys your food, quick. This is dry mix. The birds are out, but I wonder if they're gonna go in for the food. All right, let's do this. Here, step up. Good bird. Oh no, here. Don't you guys wanna go back in? There's dry mix. All right, I'll let the birds figure out how to get back in. They ate a lot of the breakfast, good. Very good. All right, both females are in. The male's trying to get in, but here, it's... No? Okay, he's gonna figure it out. Man, it is raining. Good boy, he figured it out. Moving now towards the door. Go ahead, you got it. Good boy. Awesome. Come on, go down. Go down. You got it. Ah, oh, almost. OMG guys, Whew. I had to assist. Wipe you off. I had to assist the birds. A storm's in. Whew. But they're all inside now, enjoying their dry mix. Yes. Hi, wow. Awesome. Galeng kuya. So he's just gonna continue this whole weaving process all the way down there. I asked him, I said, can it really, could it take like 20 people? He says, yes, it can take a lot, a lot of people. And like these pipes are really secure. They've been built securely into the concrete. So yeah, it should be able to take even heavier people, like a lot of weight. Um, and then I asked, is it comfortable to sleep on? He says, yes, it's comfortable for the body, but you know, you need pillows for your head. But I'm thinking we could just lay some bed toppers on here and like if we have guests that need places to sleep, we can give them the option to sleep on this like woven floor. Oh, I love it. And I mean, me personally, I would love to sleep on this. With the rain and everything, like look at that rain. It's so relaxing. Guys, I'm gonna crawl up here on this scaffolding with Kuya. Listen to that thunder too. All you storm lovers, this hammock floor is perfect for you. Guys, you must look up Ernesto on Facebook. On Facebook, if you would like to have a hammock floor, he also sells actual hammocks. He gave, he's giving us that huge hammock for free, which we could like tie to a tree or something. Guys, he is known as Philippine Hammock Maker. Yes. Look him up, guys. Support local. And guys, I want to see it up close. Whoa. Sweet. What awesome craftsmanship. Oh, it's really sturdy. And this is his spool thing that he, he's using to weave. Wow. Oh, I can't wait to see it done. Philippine Hammock Maker. Good morning. Guys, listen to the birds. The conures are hungry. Don't worry, I got your food right here. I know this is what you guys want. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Okay, I'll feed you guys first. Guys, look at breakfast. Oh, there's so much healthy stuff in there. That's a tablespoon and a half full of goodness. There's hot peppers in there. Okay, let me give it to them. Sprouted mung beans. Um, there's kale. There's a ton of different flowers. Impatience. Um, hibiscus roselle. Butterfly pea flower, um, sesame seeds in there. Uh, oh, chamomile flowers are in there. There's some baby corn in there. A little bit of um, Swiss chard. Oh, alfalfa sprouts. See, guys? All that healthy stuff. And the same for these birds. Oh, you might be wondering about volume. I usually feed the same amount, even though these birds are larger. Um, and they actually eat less. And the reason for that is, these birds are actually related to Eclectus, for those of you parrot folks. And Eclectus have really long digestive systems, so tendency is they eat less volume-wise than any ordinary parrot their size would. Yeah, enjoy. I put on both sides because sometimes they like squabble, as you can see now. Before this male used to like chase this female away 
And now she's trying to chase him away from this bowl. You can eat from both bowls. They're both the same thing. Oh my gosh, guys, do you remember the vlog where I moved these birds into the aviary? Well, remember when I also found a spider and moved it into the aviary to eat pests and insects? Well, I found it. There it is. Isn't that awesome? It's made a web here on the Dracaena. Gorgeous. You eat those mosquitoes, you, and flies and stuff. Go, go, go. And plant pests. Guys, let me tell you, these birds last night were all the way there, not even underneath the banana leaf before bed. I was like, wait a sec, why are the birds sleeping out in the open and not under the banana leaf? And then I looked carefully and there was a huge snail that was crawling up the cage. The birds were afraid of the snail. But snails are not good because they eat all of these plants. I'm like, how did a snail get in here? It was a giant snail, guys. It was like this big. Gosh, I'm loving the glass here. It looks super cool. All right, guys, I have something so cool to show you. Yes, especially if you're um, subscribers of the Ant channel. Check out what they finished. Oh, this is gonna be a trip. Guys, they finished the glass flooring. <gasps> Awesome! And also, they've put like a layer of some kind of shine over the rocks. Look at it. So the rocks look a little wet. Um, me, I was a fan of it just being dry looking, but uh, they, they were saying that over time it will look uglier and uglier. <laughs> and it's true what RJ said. RJ told me yesterday that the rocks looked old and dusty. But with this, it kind of retains their color, it protects the rocks, etc, etc. So, I think it's a cool look. But look, oh my gosh, all the glass floors are installed. Okay, they're a little dirty though. They need to be cleaned. Guys, let's go upstairs. Oh my gosh. Oh, that is crazy. RJ, I dare you to step on it. It's quite a large plank. Like, Look at it, look at RJ, and look at the glass plank. It's quite a wide plank of glass, actually. Oh, that's so scary. Yeah, we're not gonna step on it yet because I guess this um, sealant is still drying. But guys, look at it, the glass floor. So we'll be able to go over the glass floor. It can take a lot, a lot of weight. Man, that is crazy, so cool. So, there's the net flooring. Hi, good morning, Ernesto. This entire net floor will be complete in about a week, Ernesto says. So, it will take some time. And truth be told, I want him to take his time because <laughs> I want this to be stable for all our guests who are on here and who are deciding to sleep here. Because me, I'm gonna spend a night here or several nights here <laughs> with friends. Uh, we can throw some uh, bed toppers on here, throw pillows, yay! So this here is the Smart Team, uh, Life Smart PH. They are um, hooking up the blinds to these windows. So these blinds automatically open and close, which we could operate using our smart home system, our mobiles, Alexa, etc. Mabu High Squad, would you walk on this glass? Would you trust our engineers? <laughs> I mean, like, how thick is this glass? I would say that's about an inch thick. The thickness? Yeah. It's 19 mm. 19 mm? 19 mm? As in almost just two centimeters? That's, that's like that. That's not even an inch. Are you sure that can hold people? Oh my. Well, the glass company w was advised us that that's, that thickness is enough. 
Um, all right. So for those of you who are new, this is what the top of the aviary looks like. It's all meshed in. See that? It's got a retractable roof, which normally is used for like shading. We're gonna add some like seating, outdoor seating here in this area uh, for like picnics and stuff. It's up in the trees. See that beautiful rain trees surround the property. It's uh, considered an acacia and they've got gorgeous, gorgeous pink blossoms. There are places for the birds to sit up here and interact. I don't know if you guys can see, but up there are little hooks. See them? They're like hooks. So if ever I needed to hook, I don't know, a huge branch swing to go from here to there, I could. There are many possibilities, I guess. Um, and then if you look on that wall, do you see that there? That's a sprinkler. There are four sprinklers all around um, because in the Philippines, sometimes it doesn't rain, especially in the summers. And in that case, I could just turn on these sprinklers. All of this, of course, is hooked up to our smart system. So this is a smart aviary. As a size comparison, RJ, just stand there. See RJ? It's quite tall. RJ is about five, seven, like me. So it's quite tall, guys. Birds have lots of room. I can't wait for birds to come up here. I'm pretty sure the Conyers will be the first ones to reach these heights, but we'll see. These are our air conditioning units because air conditioners kind of need a rooftop part or you place them around the house on ground level. But we've placed ours on, on the roof deck and they contain deflectors, see? So it blows the air upwards and not at us. <laughs> All right guys, so I think these decals um, are pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna stick some more here on the second floor because I get the sense that maybe the birds will be making it up here or on the treetops uh, today. So I just wanna make sure uh, all of this is covered um, and the other side is covered as well and some of these sides. All right guys, lots of leaves all over. See, and look at how the sun shines off it so nicely. Just really, really, really beautiful. See that? Even cast some really cool shadows. Let's go let the birds out. All right guys, the moment of truth. But look, I'm smart this time. I've got a little jar of little seeds and treats in my Oakley fanny pack. And guys, it looks like the birds are ready. These blue knaves sure are ready. I think they want out. I think they're used to this routine now of being let out after breakfast. Hi guys. You guys wanna come out? Mm -hmm. Freedom, freedom, freedom. There you go. You guys wanna target train? Come on, here's the stick down here. I feel like these birds want to target train. Here, look at them, fighting to touch the stick. Good bird, there you go. Oops, I gave the wrong bird the, <laughs> here. There we go. You guys look so beautiful. Look at them guys. Guys, they look so beautiful in the sunlight. I think the female's gonna fly to me now. Best feeling in the world. Yes. Good flyer. Oops, I forgot to click. There you go. I got too distracted, forgot to let the bird know that it's doing the right thing. Uh oh, look who's coming. <laughs> Hey! Don't! You guys don't need to be fight over me! Here. <laughs> See that? So this here, yellow-backed female and the male. Guys, I did a poll on my community tab uh, yesterday. 
to vote for their names. Um, and a lot of you guys are like, how do you pronounce the names? Um, because they are Filipino-centric names. Um, I decided that they should be Filipino-themed names because uh, these birds are Philippine endemics. They're not common in the pet trade. Um, in fact, I don't know anyone who owns these parrots. Um, outside of the Philippines. Feel free to vote, it's on the community tab. Ow, ow, no biting. The bird bites, not to attack me because that's a different kind of bite. It's like a curious bite, or it's like, I'm gonna bite this and see what happens, kind of bite. They bite things and manipulate things with their beak like she's doing now. Ah! To feel the world around them. All right, so time for you guys to fly back. Step up. Good bird. And I think the male is... Are you going to fly back to the cage too? Here. Yep. Good birds. Okay, but watch. I know them. We got Velcro birds, Mabu High Squad. Velcro birds. Yeah. Good bird. I think the male's going to come back too. And the male is back too. And I think like she's being territorial over me. Don't be territorial. So, I think these leaves, those UV leaves, seem to be working. That's good news because next I plan on, because these two birds are very comfortable now in the aviary, I think I would plan on releasing the Conyers next. Oh, is this female coming out? OMG, Mobu High Squad, I think she's coming out. Nope, she just went in for, for some food. You wanna come out and join us? This is pretty fun here, you know? See? I got seeds. Guys, I think she's coming. She's coming. Yes, good bird. No, not down. Here. Uh, come on. Come on. Yes, good bird. Good bird. Here. Here. No! Ah! Uh, ah! Uh. Sorry. I just have to continue to say no and kind of like destabilize them before she gets it. Sorry, male. Here, here. Step up. Where are you going? No, no biting down there. OMG. No matter how many times I try to put her back, she flies to me. I'm gonna walk here. Ow! Biting of ears does not warrant a seed. Sorry. Good bird. Whoa, he landed backwards. This is the first time. She's never really ventured far from the cage. This is the first time. I'm actually a little concerned because she's like, as you've seen, she's missing a lot of tail feathers. So uh, I don't know how strong of a flyer she is. She's out. Are you gonna join us? Look at how fun. <laughs> it's so fun, right? Isn't it fun out here? Mm-hmm. She's gonna climb to the top of the cage again. Okay, I'm reading her body language. She doesn't, she's kind of nervous if I come close. If she's in the cage in her safe space and I'm close, she doesn't mind. But like with no cage, she's still kind of learning. Yep, yeah, go ahead. She's chewing her toy. <laughs> Love it guys. Doesn't she look spectacular in the sun? These birds, I swear, they look so good. Okay guys, I'm gonna continue having some us time with the birds. Um, when I'm vlogging, I feel like my attention is divided, like half to the birds and like half to you guys and vlogging, like getting the right shots and camera angles. So I'm just gonna put you down and like bond with the birds. Okay, so that session was kind of short-lived. The chaos begins, she freaked out. Oh my gosh. Okay, yellowback is on my shoulder. But the oldest female freaked out. She flew in a weird like arc down to there. And then she flew again back to the cage, overshot. And now she's here trying to climb the rocks. But it's okay. I'm letting her touch the glass. She's... Oops. It's good that she's touching the glass. She tried to climb the cage, but... It didn't seem like she could climb this side. Oh, okay, there's like a... It's too high. She's gonna try again. Maybe she'll be able to climb from the other side? 
I'm going to let her explore her environment. I, I mean, you guys saw the, the other two birds. It took them a while to figure things out. So I'm not going to like freak her out, especially because she's not 100% comfortable with me yet. So let's let her figure it out. I should add steps here or something. Oh, she's going under the cage. Okay. As for the male, he's way up there. He flew around. It was really cool to watch. He flew an arc all around, did not... He was like, I'm not touching this glass. He flew an arc and went way up there. Okay, she's still under the cage. I won't, I won't freak her out. Just try to stay calm. There she is, she's coming out. And there, there she goes. She made her way. Made her way up. Good bird. And she's like, oh, screw this. I'm going back inside the cage. <laughs> All right. With this one, it's going to be super duper gradual. And then there's the shake. She's like, that was crazy. But like the more she does this kind of thing, ah, oh, there's the shakes. <laughs> the more she does this kind of thing, the more confident she'll be. Um, again, this is her first time and her finding her own way back into the cage, super educational. Very good. Very good, bird. Very good. I'm also happy she decided to like, it was so random. She just like flew. All right, male's up there chewing a dead twig. You look so good up there. And you know what? I think you guys chewing the branches. Oh, and look who's come back. Gosh, the best feeling. These birds chewing the branches, I think stimulates the branches to like sprout new leaves. Oh, did you see me? Oh my gosh, I think guys, they're trying to get to my fanny pack. You smart birds, you. Okay, wait, go back, go on my shoulder. Um, okay, go on the shoulder then. Okay, maybe not. Ah, I gotta see. It was like open like this. They could see the seeds. So I'm gonna zip it. OMG guys, so good. I didn't catch it on film, but she took off and he took off. They flew a circle. She looked at the window, flew another circle, looked at the window, and then flew back to me. I think they get it, guys. They totally get that there's glass here. Yay. And it does seem like these leaves are working. Awesome. I saw you. I saw you guys. I think you guys are window trained now. Well, for these windows anyways. And guys, the male also just right now went from the cage. I'm sorry, I don't press record fast enough. He went from the cage, flew all the way to the rubber tree, and then flew back. I think he was gonna try to fly through, but he saw that there was glass there and then flew back and then flew to me. Oh, this is so cool. I love, love it. Yes, yes, you. Guys, the male's gonna kiss me. Okay, excuse me, no, RJ will be jealous. No, no. <sighs> I can't get away from them. Here, enjoy um, some perch time near the cage, yay. Yay, oh no. <laughs> I would like to go back in the house and have some coffee. Mm -hmm. I still haven't had my coffee yet. I feel like a zombie. <laughs> Let's go say hi to the Conyers, huh? Here are the Conyers, see? The Conyers, they are our friends too, see? Hi there. We're all one flock, all right? We're, we're one big family. Guys, look at the Conyers, they're like so intrigued. Yes, no need to be afraid. No need to be afraid. These are our friends too. Are you talking to the Conyers? Yes. Oh my gosh, guys. Yeah, they, they're our friends too. Guys, she's totally talking to the Conyers. <laughs> oh! Oh my gosh! Okay. No, no attacking. Okay. She landed on my head. Okay, the Conyers... The Conyers are biting. Oh my gosh, the Conyers are biting. Are you okay? The Conyers are biting the blue napes. Wow, these Conyers are aggressive. Okay, this is interesting to know. Guys, it looks like the introduction will be very gradual. This is a new piece of information. 
before these conures were totally afraid of the blue napes. But maybe it could be because the blue nape is like in their territory. But when it's like out here in the cage, perhaps it'll be a different story. Oh my gosh, guys, mail flew all the way up there. He is by the branches. I am so glad I added those leaves. Oh, that is so cool. And I think he is going to go on the branch. Oh my gosh, it looks so cool. Sweet. Guys, look at him. He is so happy that he's up there. Do you like it up there? OMG, there he goes, destroying branches. Let's see if he destroys my Spanish moss. Guys, we are tripping out down here, even, even her. She's looking up at him and we can't believe what we're seeing. See that? He is totally in those branches. And now he will learn that those branches are fair game for perching. I am so glad I put all of those leaves up there. I knew it, I knew he would be up there. Oh, is he going for my Spanish moss? No, he is just eating wood. The female inside the cage is tripping out too. She's like, ah! <laughs> you wanna go up there and join him? Oh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. She's way up there. I knew it, she's going to join him. She's perched right there. Oh, so cool. And he's right there. Go ahead, go join him. We put those branches up there for you. There she is, guys. She jumped and flew to that branch. And she's eating my Spanish moss. <laughs> ah. OMG, I gotta see them from the second floor. I gotta see them. Oh my gosh, guys, I have goosebumps. I have been waiting so long for this moment to literally be up in these branches with the birds. That's why we have furniture here, so people could sit here and watch the birds. Oh, they look so good up in these branches. That is awesome. Oh my gosh, guys. This is crazy, right? Oh my, I, I am so happy. Look at how cool they look up in these branches. And best part is, they're leaving my Spanish moss alone. <laughs> Oh, that is awesome. What a dream. What a dream come true. This is fantastic. Yes. Hi there. Oh my gosh, they love the little twigs. I, I have a feeling these branches will have to be replaced. I mean, guys, it's African tulip tree. It's a very hard wood, especially like towards these thicker areas here. Right now they're just breaking apart the little twigs. But like this part here is so thick and hard. I am not worried. Oh, they look so good. Be, the birds are up in the trees. Wow. <laughs> See how understated? Wow. <laughs> See that? Oh, that is so cool. Okay, wait, don't bite that. Okay guys, but can we go back to the conures for a sec? Something tells me, right, that it was a great choice that we released these Shire blue-naped parrots first. Um, because now they're getting to know the aviary, they can explore. Because if I would have done it the other way around, and we would have released the conures first, and like this would have became their domain, their territory, I feel like there was no chance these birds would have been able to explore the aviary. So I think we're on the right track, guys, in releasing the blue napes first. I do have a, an inkling that the conures were territorial because the blue naped female was actually like t on the cage, like fully in their territory. The last time she did that, the Conyers were scared. They were away from her. But this time, I think they, they were having a stare down and she was like looking at them and talking to them, like cooing at them. So, you know, it, it, it was a different interaction maybe. But that was a good piece of information to know that uh, the Blue Napes aren't allowed in the Conyers territory. Um, I do feel like eventually introducing the birds will work. Um, because there are so many people with mixed aviaries. I've shown you pictures in the past of an aviary here in the Philippines 
with literally like a hundred or two hundred birds of different sizes, of different temperaments, different species, um, all in the same cage. So, I mean, if there's a will, there's a way, and I think we'll be able to do it. We, it just needs to be extremely gradual. I don't know when the day will come when I'll be able to release both the blue nape parrots and the conures into the aviary together but it will really be a long process, guys. So, I mean, I hope you guys are patient. I know I would love to see all birds just ha interacting and like sharing the aviary, but I mean, these are animals. They're kind of unpredictable. And again, there is no handbook. I'm kind of like winging it. <laughs> oh. Okay, they're together now. Female is chewing wood. Male is just up here chilling. Hi there. Hi there, buddy. Don't try to fly through this glass. See these leaves? This is glass here. Oh, they look awesome, guys, don't they? Imagine being a bird and being able to have the like freedom to fly to huge heights and like just perch on a tree. Perfect balance and all. Man, being a bird is awesome. Yes, you're so cute. Okay, a little scary because they're watching me go like step away. I don't want them to think that they could fly and follow me. No, okay, they went back to foraging. All right. You guys okay up there? <laughs> oh my, guys. These aviary adventures, I swear, it's just never ending. Look at how cool they look up there. See? Isn't that awesome? They look so great up there. And they are super high. Like, see? That's ground level, and that's the birds. How did I know that they would be up here today? I don't know, I just psychically connected. Guys, wasn't that a success? That was awesome, OMG. Okay, <sighs> finally coffee, cheers. That is so cool. And you know what, I don't mind if they destroy the wood because, I mean, the wood is up there for them to destroy and perch on. Um, I've got a ton of it. I like collected so much of it, of that specific African tulip tree wood, which is per bird safe uh, from Tagaytay where we used to live. The day we moved out, literally, it was like the going away present from Tagaytay to us. <laughs> I found this huge pile of discarded like driftwood. They had cut them down from the trees and were like on the side of the road. And I literally like got a truck and like loaded it all on and shipped it over here. It's all in the back right now. So I'm not worried about them like totally destroying that wood. Oh, it's so cool. They're up in the tree now. Oh, guys, I love keeping birds. Hi guys, are you gonna come down? Actually, just stay up there. It's totally fine. I won't have your dry mix for another two or three hours anyway. So enjoy. See, this is bird enrichment, seriously. As for you guys, hi there, Rojo. Is Rojo gonna trust me? Rojo is the shyest one, he's the youngest boy. And he like, still needs a red breast to grow in. But he's the shyest of the three. Will you let me touch you for once? Can I touch your toe? No. <laughs> you guys gonna take a nap? These birds are gonna take a nap, I think. You guys have to be nice. We are all one flock, okay? Uh, guys, once the day comes when I mix the birds for the first time, I already know that's gonna be habit havoc. I'm not a bird. I can't go all the way up there and like break up a fight. I really need to be vigilant. Um, it doesn't seem like the blue napes are aggressive. But, I mean, there's no way to tell. It's just, I gotta try it. Guys, this male is studying the glass. See him? He's studying. I think he wants, he's, he's curious if he can fly through the glass because he sees me. Oh, well look who came out to play. The female. Hi there. Don't worry. You could just chill there. Don't worry about me. It's been about an hour since the birds were up there and they're still up there. All right, I'm gonna eat this. Sabah. Mmm. 
<laughs> Guys, I'm eating. Oh. oh, look who's come down in the tree. Mm. 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 This is so good. How about you? How about you, Mel? Huh? This bird loves to perch on my head. Okay, wait. Okay, she's going back to the cage. Guys, she has a habit of perching on my head. Oh, here she comes. Mmm. Mmm. Here, have a bite. This here is called saba. It's like a banana. Do you like? You might like it. No, not. Oops. Not the peeling. Here. You know the leaves you guys like chewing? That's. This is the fruit. Okay. The male's looking up, looking down at us. I think he wants to join us. Here's the fruit. You know, your sister, who's passed, Legaya, used to love this. This used to be her favorite. Guys, this is communal feeding now. Come down. I got banana. Guys, I think she likes it. You like it? I don't blame you. I do too. Very healthy. Let's see if this female is open to having some banana. I'm stretching my arm out far, far, far. Here. Try it, it's delicious. Yes. Good girl, mmm, isn't that good? Oh, her eyes are pinning. See those pinning eyes? How her pupils like really like dilate? She really likes it. Mmm, isn't that good? Now I usually never add fruit to their diet because they don't do enough exercise to burn it off. But now that they're flying in the aviary and stuff, I have no qualms about feeding them some fruit. Are you gonna come down? Try some banana. It's delicious, trust me. Here, have some more. Yes. Oh, oh, she took the whole thing. OMG, that's a lot. And you're not really a flyer. Here, give, give, me, give it back, give it back. OMG, give it back. She dropped it. Oh, you are so sneaky, you. You do a lot of flying, I'll give you some. Okay, how about you guys? You wanna try banana? Wanna try banana? Well, saba, plantain. Try it. Mmm. Isn't it good? It's good, right? Mmm. Tasty. Ah, okay. Guys, every time I hear a flurry of wings, I like freak out. So she was about to land on the cage and she's like, oh hell no, not again. <laughs> so she landed on me. Look at that eye pinning. See that? Watch her pupils, guys. Parrots do this when they really like what they're seeing or, or eating. Okay, someone has come down to this tree, I see. Are you gonna join us? I've saved a little bit of banana for you. Come on, come on. Wow, guys, he totally flew down to the tree. Yes, here, come, come, come. Right now, he's more interested in eating some tree blooms. Oh, she went to join him. Okay, all right. Do want him to try banana. Try it. You can have the last piece. There you go. Delicious, right? Mmm. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> I think they're going to eat the... Are you guys gonna eat the blossoms? No, just eating some twigs. Which I bet in turn will cause the tree to bloom more of these beautiful new leaves. So cool! And there they are, continuing to frolic in the African Talisai. Alright, and at that I'm just gonna let them enjoy this outdoor time. I've continued to place more of these UV leaves on the outside of this aviary because, I mean, it seems to work. RJ also bought 20 more packages, which means 80 more sheets of these leaves. So I'm just gonna continue to plaster them all over. Um, and then over time, I'll just remove them bit by bit and also wash, oh, the bird totally flew back up to the branch. That's so awesome. Um, I'll just continue to like wash the spirals off and peel the leaves off gradually as the birds become more and more custom. Guys, I think today was a total, total success. It's only a matter of time until they discover they can fly all the way up to the roof. OMG, my boy squad. Oh, what a day. Wasn't that amazing? 
Mind blowing. It's mind blowing, Mabu High Squad, because for those of you who've been following these vlogs for however many years, you guys saw the aviary being built. It took so long, and every time I would visit the aviary, I would say the same thing. The, I can't wait for this aviary to be fully decorated like a, a forest and to see birds up in the trees, up in the branches. And guys, that day is here. We did it. We manifested this. So I am super elated at this. This is super cool. Um, but guys, again, this vlog has continued on for so long now. Thank you so much for watching. I am so sorry these vlogs are like hour long. They're just gonna get longer, I think. <laughs> because I love documenting this stuff. Because I love going back and watching it all over again. And reliving the moment. Uh, and you know what? It means so much to me that you guys are part of this journey. You guys so are part of this journey because a lot of your comments are so helpful. And I just feel the support and love from you guys in the comments and again, if you enjoyed this vlog, guys, it's super, super helpful. We would really appreciate it. If you hit that like button, it lets YouTube know that our vlogs are worth sharing to new audiences. And be sure to hit that subscribe button. Come join our Mabuhai squad. We will be your regular dose of positive vibes online. I am like beaming with joy because, guys, our channel is reaching this strange glow up. This vlog channel, I mean. I'm, I'm looking at the analytics of the videos over the past month and <sighs> seriously, um, views are really good, thank you. So many of you are new. A lot of you guys are from a the Ants Canada channel, which is awesome. Welcome AC family. Subscribe here, join our Mabuhai squad. There's a lot of AC family here and it's an awesome com community. We are like a bunch of people who just love to to be happy and like immerse ourselves, swim in the positive vibes. <sighs> okay, so guys, I will see you in the next vlog. Thank you so much for tuning in and love you guys so much. Honestly, I feel so grateful in this exact moment. I'll see you in the next vlog, guys. Bye. Mm -hmm. The Conyers are going in soon. Next.